If the goal is to find just one best solution, that's design optimization. That's not generative design. The main purpose of generative design is design exploration. The key question is not how we do generative design, but why we do generative design. AI generates ideas beyond human limits. Engineers can test only a handful of options, but AI can explore and evaluate tens of thousands in real time. It dramatically reduce time and cost. A month-long design optimization process for an automotive part, we cut it down to just one minute. This allow even junior engineers to perform at the level of a senior experts. We aim to pioneer agentic AI design platforms. These platforms will be able to handle end-to-end -end design tasks autonomously. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode here on the Engineering Mind podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, Nam Wu Kang from Nanya Labs, who, are, who is developing Aslan X. We will learn in a couple of minutes what Aslan X is all about. But uh, Nam Wu, welcome to the show and please introduce yourself to the audience. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Nam Wu Kang. I'm a professor at Kaist Smart Design Lab. I'm also the founder and CEO of Nanya Labs. And Nanya Labs and KAIST, we focus on generative AI-driven engineering design research and solutions. I balance these two roles, professor and CEO, and through them, I try to reach academia and industry. Uh, by way of background, I earned my PhD in design science from the University of Michigan. I also worked at Hyundai Motor Company, managing the vehicle development process. Really cool, really insightful. Um, one of the most important questions, especially for the audience, is how do you define generative design? Because there's a lot of definitions out there, but how do you, Nambu, define um, generative design? That's a very good question. And as you said, there isn't just one single definition of generative design. For me, the key question is not how we do generative design, but why we do generative design. Uh, the main purpose of generative design is design exploration. Any method that helps us explore new design possibilities can be considered generative design. The origin go back to the 1970s with nature-inspired design algorithm. Then in uh, 1990s, parametric CAD tool appeared uh, that really accelerated the research in generative design. Since then, generative design has been applied in many fields, manufacturing, automotive, aerospace, and especially construction. Construction has been one of the most active areas of research. And more recently, topology optimization became popular as a tool for design exploration. This helped to bring generative design into the mainstream. A um, more concise definition from our research is Generative design refers to computational design methods that can automatically conduct design exploration under constraints defined by designers. In this end, any computational methods that explores large design space and inspires new ideas in the early conceptual design stage can be called generative design whether it's rule-based or data-driven. I think that that was a really good explanation, Ambu. So now the question follows, is topology optimization the same as generative design? Um, that's a very common misconception. Topology optimization, parametric design, and deep generative models, all of these are actually subsets of generative design. Uh, if the goal is to find just one best solution, that's design optimization. That's not generative design. But if mm -hmm. we use topology optimization for exploration to generate multiple alternatives, then yes, it becomes generative design. The confusion comes from the way CAD CA software companies market it. Uh, they often promote topology optimization as if it were the same thing as generative design. In reality, it's only one method within the broader generative design framework. Got it. Okay. And then so how does topology optimization then enable design exploration? Traditional topology optimization can help with design exploration in three main ways. Uh, first, you can find the different local optima. Uh, this happens when you change the initial design, penalization factors, filtering methods, or termination criteria. 
Uh, second, uh, you can find the Pareto set by solving multiple objective optimization problems. For example, handling multiple load cases at once. Uh, third, you can weigh problem parameters, things like forces, boundary conditions, volume fraction, box size, materials, or manufacturing constraints. Uh, by changing these definitions, engineers can generate many different optimal solutions, and that's how exploration become possible. Really interesting. Now the million dollar question, Namu, how is topology optimization similar or different from artificial intelligence? This is the second big misconception. Some companies call topology optimization AI. In a broad sense, rule-based methods could be called AI, but they are not the same as more than machine learning or deep learning. So we should clearly separate them Rule-based generative design includes things like topology optimization or parametric design. Data-driven generative design includes methods like GANs, VAs, diffusion, or DBSDEC. So the key difference, rule-based methods don't rely on data. They explore by tweaking parameters. But data-driven methods actually learn distribution from data and then generate new samples. Interestingly, uh, results from topology optimization are often used as training data for the data-driven uh, generative design. Since real-world data sets are limited, synthetic data from topology optimization helps fill this gap. So that's why I often ask, when you say generative design, do you mean data-driven methods? If yes, it usually refers to AI-based generative design with machine learning or deep learning. If not, it usually means traditional rule-based methods like topology optimization. That makes sense, Namo. Yeah, excellent. Perfect segue into my next question, which is like, how is data-driven generative design then being applied in the real world? Because academia is one thing, right? I also played a little bit around with like these generative design methods, especially uh, autoencoders, et cetera, uh, in university. But what is the real world, uh, real world impact Sorry, um, in the industry? Sure. Uh, in 2023, uh, our group published a review paper on data-driven topology optimization. In that paper, mm -hmm. we categorized different approaches by their purpose. For example, uh, these methods can speed up optimization iteration, enable non-iterative optimization, build meta-models, reduce dimensionality of the design space, uh, improve optimizers, support generative design exploration, and enhance post-processing. One example is our 2019 paper on deep generative design. Um, here's what we did. We started with a simple 2D field reference images. Then we ran topology optimization to generate steeper designs that still looked like reference fields. Uh, next, we train a VAE on the synthetic data. The VA produced new design variations. We fed uh, those back into topology optimization and creating an iterative loop between deep generative model and topology optimization. That work was quite unique at that time. It has now been cited about 600 times and inspired mm -hmm. a lot of follow-up research. This is super interesting, Namu. Um, we talk about data-driven and we talk about topology optimization. So what is the limitation of data-driven topology optimization? We've made progress, but there are still big challenges. First, it doesn't scale easily to full division problems. Second, collecting data is still very expensive and time-consuming. Third, many results are low resolution or harder to manufacture in practice. Fourth, the computations, uh, especially FEA, are still heavy. And mm -hmm. finally, machine learning models don't always generalize well to new problems. I see. Super interesting. Uh, I want to take a step back, Nambu, and talk about, because you talked a little bit about the, um, from ac coming from academia, sorry, going from academia to the industry, where we have a different uh, generated output um, quantities, I would call it, 2D, 2.5D, 3D. Could do you or do you want to categorize them? Like, and what's the difference between them? Yes, and Nanyan Labs and Kaist Smart Design Lab, we apply data-driven generative design across many industries, 
And this includes automotive, electronics, heavy industry, robotics, and more. We usually categorize outputs into uh, four levels. Uh, first, 2D generation. This is common in academia. It can use foundation models to generate images. And second, 2.5D generation. This ex extends 2D into 3D through reconstruction. It works mm -hmm. well when thickness or cross-section is simple. Depth map can also be used. Third, 3D generation. This is the most relevant for real-world design. Since most engineering data is 3D, uh, but because data is limited, we often combine rule-based pre- and post-processing with data-driven models. Fourth, 3D assembly generation. This is the most challenging level. It requires learning inter-party relationship, avoiding interference, and ensuring manufacturability. Recently, with large language models and multimodal foundation models, text-to-CAD has become possible. This eliminates the need for massive data sets. We can now do zero-shop or few-shop uh, generative design. I see this as uh, a major breakthrough. This is a super interesting number. Yeah, thanks for sharing. So would you say that Nanya Labs is focused on data-driven generative design? Is that your main purpose? Uh, yes, absolutely. Data-driven generative design is the core of our technology. Our vision is to become the world-leading generative AI company for product design. Uh, since founding Narnia Labs in 2022, we have grown into a team of 30. Um, we now work with more than 20 global customers. In Korea, our solutions are being used by major manufacturers like Hyundai, Samsung, and LG. And we are also collaborating with leading automotive OEMs in Europe and the United States. So far, we've solved over 60 real-world industrial design problems. Our main users are design, simulation, and testing engineers. Increasingly, even industrial designers and sales teams are using our tools. Great. I'm, I'm wondering, maybe a fun question on the side. Why did you call Narnia Labs Narnia Labs? The name comes from the Chronicles of Narnia. In the story, children open a wardrobe door and find a magical new world. There, they go on adventures with the lion, Aslan. We want you to create something similar, a virtual world where even a child can design anything that imagine, guided by an AI Aslam. That's why we named the company Narnia Labs, and fittingly, our product is called Aslam X. I see. That makes sense. Okay, got it. Yeah, cool. Nice reference. And um, why did you, what was the initial motivation number for you initially to found Narnia Labs in the first place? At KAIST, I lead the Smart Design Lab. It was one of the first labs in Korea focused on AI driven design. The demand from industry was overwhelming, far more than our lab could handle. I realized our technology had the potential to transform not just few com companies, but the entire manufacturing industry. To scale that impact, I decided to start a company. Six of my former students joined me as, as co-founders. Uh, they were already working in major companies and startups. Together in 2022, we launched Narnia Labs with the goal of revolutionizing design process using AI. Got it. Okay, I think there is a lot of AI hype out there. Everybody's talking about artificial intelligence and So my question to you is, what benefits explicitly can companies expect from applying AI, especially in design processes? Applying AI to design isn't just about improving a few processes. It actually transforms the entire product development paradigm. Uh, there are three major benefits. Uh, first, it dramatically reduces time and cost. For example, a month-long design optimization process for an automotive part, we cut it down to just one minute. In that time, AI generated 30,000 new design alternatives and evaluated their performance. Second, AI generates ideas beyond human limits. Engineers can test only a handful of options, but AI can explore and evaluate tens of thousands in real time. Uh, that means discovering designs humans might never uh, imagine. Third, AI empowers engineers. It can 
encode knowledge from the past success and failures. Uh, mm -hmm. This allow even junior engineers to perform at the level of senior experts. That's especially valuable for companies facing talent shortages. Absolutely, yeah. With uh, with the generative AI booming, everybody talks about large language model, ChatGPT, Gemini, etc. But equally, also for the engineering application, there seem to be a lot of companies who claim that they can do generative design and uh, data-driven topology optimization. But what makes Nanyan Labs, in this case, unique? I just highlighted three uh, key differences. Uh, one, uh, we solve the data shortage problem. Most mm -hmm. manufacturing companies don't have enough 3D design data. Our technology can generate huge amount of high-quality synthetic 3D data that is valid both physically and engineering-wise. Two, uh, we go beyond the prediction to true generation. Uh, many AI solutions stop at predicting performance, but our system actually generates and recommends optimal design solutions in real time. Three, uh, we have deep domain expertise. Our team is a mix of top AI researchers and seasoned engineers. Uh, many come from uh, leading manufacturing companies like Hyundai, Samsung, and LG, and so on. Uh, this uh, combination allows us to tackle the hardest challenge in engineering design AI. What, what kind of people make up Nanya Labs and what culture do you pursue? I think from my perspective, or especially for people listening, maybe students who want to join your team in the near future, are interested in how is Nanya Labs um, as a, as a cultural entity. My lifelong dream has been to mentor young people. Uh, bonding Nanyan Labs is a part of that dream. Uh, we put individual growth at the center of our culture. We even have a dedicated culture team, and that team leads initiatives and works with, uh, with everyone to define how we want to grow together. Also, we have been fully remote since day one. Despite that, uh, we've grown very quickly. This shows the strength of our trust-based culture. Got it. What's, what's kind of the, let's say, three, five, or 10-year-long vision of Nanya Labs, of, uh, from, of you, the founder? That would be interesting for me to understand. Our ultimate goal is to make our products the global standard uh, for AI-driven design in manufacturing. We want to redefine engineering design paradigm in AI, and you want to write a new chapter in history as a Korean startup leading the global market. On the technology side, we aim to pioneer agentic AI design platforms. Uh, these platforms will be able to handle end-to-end -end design tasks autonomously. On the market side, we are expanding beyond Korea. We are building partnership in Japan and the US. And in the future, We'll move into other industries like aerospace, energy, construction, healthcare, and even the metaverse. This is super cool, yeah. Maybe last question for myself before we wrap it up, Nambu. How do you see the future paradigm of design evolving? I mean, we talked about AI, agentic AI, agent swarms, etc. Like, how do you see the future, though, evolving in the next couple of years? Before AI, the paradigm was design optimization. The goal was to find one best solution using physical-based modeling. But with data-driven de generative design, the focus shifted. It became about exploration and inspiration. But now, we are entering a new era, autonomous design with agentic AI. In this paradigm, AI itself becomes the primary designer. And Nanya Labs, we are preparing for the future. We are moving beyond the data-driven generative design toward fully autonomous design. This is great, Nambu. Pretty short podcast. For everybody who wants to check out Nanya Labs, I recommend highly to visit nanya.ai. And you guys even have a very fun YouTube channel with a lot of uh, educational videos. M some of the stuff is in Korean, but again, you, we have AI, so you can translate the material as well. Um, really looking forward to what you guys are working on in the next couple of uh, months and years. And I believe we will even have a deep dive session where some of uh, your people, your engineers, will walk us through how Aslan X actually works. So this is going to be super interesting for the audience. So thank you so much, Nambu, and I uh, hopefully talk to you quite soon again in another podcast episode. Yeah, thank you so much for having me today. I hope more, more engineers get excited about AI-driven design and join us in building the future together. Thank you.